Today, I've got something from the millennium year 2000. Can you guess what it is? Confirmation that I might be a hoarder of some kind. Because stored away in a treasure box collecting dust in a garage, I have a Six Flags Astro World theme park guide from the year 2000. Mint condition. So Astroworld was in Houston. I remember going some as a kid. It was self-declared as the thrill capital of Texas, although Six Flags Over Texas could give it a pretty good run for its money. They did have Waterworld. Splash through summer at Waterworld. Get caught in the Texas Cyclone. How about that for wordplay? Attractions exclusively for kids. Duh. It's a theme park. Special bonus, free comic book with stories starring Bugs Bunny and Batman. There's definitely like a major DC Comics partnership going on, and I think they still have that at a lot of the Six Flags parks. This defunct park, this is like one of the last things we have left. So hopefully you enjoy this. Got a Three Musketeers ad. They're the Three Musketeers and they're pumped up just like the chocolate cargo they're sworn to protect. They're the Defenders of the Chocolate, Three Musketeers. It's pumped. Rated PU for pumped up audiences only. We got like a bizarro claymation thing going on. I guess that was popular. I mean, you see it some on music videos from the time. I just, I don't remember that being super relevant in 2000, but what do I know? I just lived in it. So they have this fold-out thing with all the games and attractions, a list of some of the shows. Let's just read the titles. I'm not going to bore you to tears. The Fantasy of Fire was in Lagoon Theater. What's Up Rock was in Looney Tunes Town Theater. Crystal Palace Review was a musical show in Western Junction. American Rock was in the Showcase Theater in the Coney Island section of the park. The Grease Monkeys were on Jukebox Hill for a live outdoor musical with a 50s vibe. And naturally, this is a Six Flags staple. You have Looney Tunes characters walking around uh, to get pictures with. Back then, you didn't have to pay. That was nice. The Court Jester was at the Sword and Crown restaurant. Beware the sharp tongue wit of the Court Jester, a puppet with a medieval sense of humor. Cool. Rainmaker at Western Junction. Don't forget your umbrellas. Step back in time as our Rainmaker cools off the day with a little help from some friends. So this folds out. You can see the Texas Cyclone featured here. A bunch of information on the guest services and information on the park. A map that can separate from the book. We're kind of going for a color-coded theme. A Thrill Seekers guide to Astro World and Water World. So even though they were in the same park, they were kind of trying to differentiate. So this side was mostly Water World. I'm gonna just list off a few of the rides. Mayan Mindbender. This one was a really cool indoor ride. Kind of had a Space Mountain vibe, but with a Mayan spin on it. Had the Serial Thriller. This one was a really fast ride. I don't remember that one so well. Tidal Wave. This is just your traditional splash somebody on the bridge water ride. Accelerate. That was nice. A good, good fast one. The Viper. I remember there was this one particular tube thing that you would go through and then you'd really start going fast as you came down the hill into a loop. Batman the Escape. Now that was a cool one. Just the Batman element of the ride. Six Flags at one point in time in the 90s and early 2000s really sunk a lot of money into their ride theming and it paid off. Breeze Lightning, this one just kind of shot you out like a gun up the hill and then you came back down backwards and through a loop and then back to the station. Texas Cyclone over here. This is just your traditional wooden roller coaster. It was a lot of fun, I remember. Ultra Twister. I have to look that one up. I'm sure I probably wrote it, but I'm not remembering. For water ride enthusiasts, they had the Hooks Lagoon, Big Kahuna, the Thunder River, and I remember this one particular slide that just went straight down like 80 feet, and at the time that felt mega intense. Can't forget the wave pool. And then on looking, you had this hodgepodge of his Looney Tunes characters plus the DC world. So this nested into this booklet. And because of all the partnerships going on between Six Flags and Warner Brothers, 
We have Batman, the Riddler rides again. I'm not gonna do voices or read the comic, but just maybe react to the ads here. Got a Catwoman game on Game Boy Color. It might just be the perfect action game. As Catwoman, the best cat burglar in the world, you'll move through tight spots and encounter challenging environments. Feline strength, furtive movements. You'll have to rely on all your cat-like qualities to stay out of harm's way. An agile leap here, a lightning fast flip there. You have all the right moves, and this game has enough excitement to last a lifetime. Make that nine lifetimes. Nice. Game Boy Color graphics were pretty cutting edge at the time. I'm not like a major gamer, but when they got the Game Boy Advance SP that had that backlight behind the screen, that was really when they got next level, because having to light up the screen on your games was pretty lame if you ever played in the car after dark. More comic. Batman's mystery page. Got villain scramble. Word search. Enter the Milk Mustache, DC Superheroes, Sweepstakes. You could be the lucky winner of an adventure of a lifetime. 1,000 first prizes, DC Superheroes Adventure Pack. Enter online at dcmilk.com. Or by mail at Milk Mustache, DC Superhero Sweepstakes in Florida. Here's some of the sponsors. Some of these might rest in peace at this point. DC Comics, Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers Studio Store. Cool. Best Western Hotels, Kid Rhino, Hasbro, Walter Foster, Accessory Network, Vatical Entertainment, and Zoc Designs. And after you sold your information to them and you got your little award, they marketed you for the rest of your life. That's how this works. So that's what all this fine print down here says. Here's some sponsors of Astroworld. You had Chevrolet, the Venture Minivan on display there, Hawaiian Tropic, Aquafresh Toothpaste, Deluxe Paint Store, Stridex, Kool-Aid, Kodak, America Online, Silverleaf Resort. Now at the end, there is a hair-raising Mr. Fudd Looney Tunes episode. You can see some Six Flags artwork back here, so it's pretty epic. Advertising built in, grab every bit of adventure with a season pass. Got a nod to the rabbit season, duck season, right there. How about a Polaris Snow Cross game on Game Boy Color? Polaris, the world's number one snowmobile manufacturer, brings you the first ever snowmobile game for Game Boy Color. With link cable support for two players, rumble cartridge, advanced snowmobile physics system, customizable sleds, and three leagues with 10 intense tracks. I don't know how many snowmobile games exist, but these guys were at the front end of it and they get to advertise their product, so nicely done. That was put out by Vatical Entertainment, who is also a sponsor on the sweepstakes, just FYI. There's more ride shenanigans happening in the park there. I know you don't really see this anymore too often. I'm sure it's still in the gas stations now and then, but got some corn nuts. Tonight on the Winky the Crow Show, Winky calls on his kung fu skills to disarm a crazed fan. Brought to you by the out there taste and crunch of corn nuts, the official snack of a weird, weird world. Cornnuts.com. It's barbecue flavor on display here. Can't say I was ever really a fan of corn nuts, but. Mm. What would life in 2000 be without a Pokemon ad? Don't trade it for anything. Pokemon, the first movie. Mewtwo versus Mew. Free game card inside every video. Plus, never before seen footage and story of Mewtwo's origin and a sneak preview of Pokemon, the movie 2000. Pokemon toys are back at Burger King. Now you have one more chance to collect all 57 Pokemon toys and get a coupon for $2 off Pokemon, the first movie now on video with every Burger King Big Kids meal. Owned on video and DVD. America Online keyword. What is it? Pokemon! That's it. That's the Astroworld theme park guide from the year 2000. Hopefully you enjoyed reliving some memories, or if you never went, you learned something about a now defunct theme park in Houston, Texas.